Hello everybody, I'm in a hotel right now. As you can see, I'm actually in downtown LA shooting something really exciting that you will find out about later this month. Hey, wait, before the video starts, I just wanna let you know that I just dropped my new merch and I love it and I'm so excited about it. So click the link in the description box and get you something. Okay, anyway. I have gotten a lot of requests to make a video about how I got fit, how I lost weight, what I eat in a day, all that kind of stuff. So I thought I would kind of just put it all into one video. So welcome to the video. Before I begin, it's so, so important to acknowledge that this is a very sensitive topic. I will be talking about, you know, my body. I will be touching on an eating disorder. And if that's something you feel might be triggering to you or upset you, then feel free to click off the video. You don't have to watch this. I don't want to make anybody feel anything they don't need to be feeling, you know? Also, weight is something that's different for everybody and weight will constantly be fluctuating and changing all throughout your life, especially right now. I feel like we're all growing up and our bodies are changing a lot, which I'll be talking about later. But please, please do not get it twisted that there is one type of body that is a beautiful body. I think what makes a body beautiful is how well you're treating it and how good you feel in your body. That is what's most important. This video is not just about losing weight at all. That's like a tiny, tiny part of the video. I actually weigh about the same that I weighed when I was at my most unhealthy with my body because I replaced it with muscle. So that being said, if you're sticking around, I'm so happy to have you. Let's get into the video. I wrote an essay. I feel like I need to give you guys a little bit of background on my body and everything that it's kind of gone through over the last years. My whole life, until I was 20 years old, I have been pretty thin and my metabolism has always been so fast. I have never had to worry about how much crap food I eat because I've always just been thin and that was just my life and whatever. I started to gain weight in like 2019, right after I broke up with Dylan. If you guys were here for that, you know what I'm talking about. I think this happened for a number of reasons. Number one, my body was changing. I was going from being a teenage girl to womanhood. And so inevitably your body's going to change. And that's what was happening to me. Also, I was trying to cope with the negative depressing feelings of a really big breakup. And I was seeking comfort in food and my bed. So I was eating a lot and I was never working out. I gained up to a little over 20 pounds. I actually formed an eating disorder that I do not talk about. Like, at all. I kept it a secret because I was really embarrassed by it and I didn't even know this was an eating disorder because you never hear about this, but I formed a binge eating disorder. So I was constantly eating food any chance I could get, just constantly overeating. I would eat to the point where I felt so sick, but I couldn't comprehend stopping eating the food. It was really, really tough. And it was really only when I was alone. Even though I feel terrible about it, my body literally hurts, my stomach hurts, I'm gonna keep eating and eating and eating. Like I would be up at 3 a.m. just eating everything in my kitchen. And I was aware of it too, but I really couldn't stop. I realized that this was a problem because I didn't really have control over the food I was eating and how much of it I was eating. I had just lost control. I had a terrible, terrible relationship with food. And so I decided to do some research and figure out like what the heck is wrong with me? Is this a thing? Boom, binge eating disorder. That was my problem. So next thing I tried to do obviously was stop this eating disorder. I will just try a bunch of different diets. Bad idea, no. I was restricting a lot. I was trying so many different diets just so that I could have control. But a lot of the time, my restriction resulted in more binge eating because if you're restricting yourself, just being so hard on yourself, but you're wanting these foods, eventually you're going to give your body these foods because that's how the mind works. That's just how it is. I was so depressed and also with my depression I wanted my comfort food so it was really really hard I tried meal prepping which actually really helped but I think the top things that helped me were not being alone busying myself and only buying food that I know I would feel good about eating and also not having an excess of food in my house like I said I also wasn't working out at all so once I started working out and prioritizing that and making it kind of like a routine regular thing that helped a lot because also I started to find comfort in 
and working out and it was like addicting it was almost as addicting as eating as much food as i was eating so that was a really nice little replacement i guess so i was kind of consistently doing that and slowly but surely started to lose weight around spring of 2020 and it was really helpful that i moved in with my sister brie too so i wasn't living by myself i was living with someone else and embarrassment comes along with the binge eating disorder you want to be alone when you're doing that so having somebody that i lived with was very helpful so next what did i do to fix my relationship with food i know it's not just me having a healthy relationship with food is really really hard but here are some things i did to fix that like i said staying busy being around people not weighing myself please don't weigh yourself unless you're like in a sport where you need to weigh yourself or i don't know if you absolutely have to do it but i say please stay away from the scale because that's not gonna help you that's just gonna hurt you no matter what like it's just not a good thing because also with all your working out that you're now doing you're gaining muscle which is putting more weight on your body so weighing yourself you could see a number and be like oh my gosh i'm like still fat no you're stronger and you have muscle that actually weighs more than fat so Another thing that helped build a healthy relationship with food for me was grocery shopping and buying healthy foods, like I said, but also allowing yourself to have a treat every now and then because like I said, restriction is the worst. I think there's a difference between discipline and restriction. You can be disciplined about the kinds of food you eat and what you put into your body and maybe how many meals you have and how big the meals are. And that can be really good. If you're good with self-control and being disciplined, that's amazing. But then restricting can kill you that is so bad just don't restrict live your life next let's talk about how I maintained my weight and got fit like I said over time my relationship with food got a lot better and I was able to stop monitoring myself so much and I let myself have treats every now and then which is really nice you can go like a whole week staying true to your goals and being consistent with what kind of food you're putting in your body and you can be looking forward to a treat that you know you love like maybe at the end of the week and that's actually the best formula for how I got to where I am now. I also found a really amazing cardio workout class called Orange Theory and I was like obsessed with it. I was going so much because I loved it. I love the way it made me feel. I love that it was just an hour long. I love that it was with other people and I noticed toning in my body which I hadn't seen in so long. You guys, I have a lot of cellulite. It's just how my body is and when I had that extra fat on my body, the cellulite was 10 out of 10. It was, I had a lot of cellulite. And when I started going to Orange Theory and when I wasn't eating as much as I did before, I noticed a lot of the cellulite go away, which I did not think was possible. It was like when I had acne. I was like, there's no way my acne is ever going to go away. That's impossible. That's how my mindset was. Just because it was so bad. And I was like, how the heck am I going to come out of this? That's kind of how I felt about cellulite. I was like, this is how it is. Like, this is how I am. This is never going to go away. Well, guess what? It kind of did. To maintain your weight, eating is the biggest thing. I feel like, at least in America, we think we need to eat until we're full with every meal that's actually not how humans were made to be we need to eat until we're satiated and we're satisfied we got our meal in we don't need to eat until we're full and we're like oh my gosh okay now i'm done eating you know what i mean so that doesn't mean a stomach ache every time you eat a meal listening to your body is so so important you know when you're eating you reach that point where you're like okay i could be done now but you just keep eating because it tastes good or because you feel like you need to be 100 percent full listen to that little message message and know that you can always eat a little bit more later please please do not take this advice as only eat a little bit you don't have to fill your body that's not at all what i'm saying no what i'm saying is listen to yourself you know when you're done eating you know because this will just help prevent overeating i don't know if it's just for me but this is something that actually really helped anyway next <laughs> another thing you can do to maintain your weight is obviously just avoiding super sugary foods or fast foods because bruh they put so much crap in that food like there's no way that's good for you there's no way it's good for you last thing i want to talk about in this video are my tips to being healthy and staying healthy if you've been living in a pretty unhealthy way with food and working out now's the time to start working out when you're first getting into working out I think doing so five days a week or maybe even more if you feel like it is the way to go. This is what I did. Now, that does not mean doing an intense cardio circuit five to seven days a week every single day. Don't do that. What I do personally is I'll have one day where I go super hard in a workout. Maybe it's a lot of cardio, lots of calories are burned. And then the next day I'll do something that tones my body and it's not super high intensity and it's not a lot of cardio. So I'll like 
focus on my arms or my abs or my butt or whatever and it's a little bit less intense and I'll just like rotate those days so you're not overworking your body and not being super hard on yourself and then once you've kind of gotten to a point where you're happy I think working out three to five days a week is great because our bodies need exercise and exercise does not mean going to the gym like exercise can literally just be taking a walk getting up and doing jumping jacks our bodies need that I've talked about this a lot but food is the biggest part of how your body will be looking so try to have three structured meals a day and try to stay away from snacking super super important listen to your body at the end of the day you only have your body you're working on your body you need to listen to it I think that's a huge part of loving your body and getting to a healthy point with your body if that makes any sense but if I want a chocolate bar I'm gonna go get that chocolate bar I'm gonna eat it and I'm going to enjoy it I'm not gonna be thinking about oh my gosh this is so bad for me like I'm gonna gain weight like please do not think like that just have the chocolate bar enjoy the chocolate bar and know that you're not going to have a chocolate bar every single day so it's okay you're okay something that I recently realized is looking in the mirror and constantly thinking about what you look like to other people or you know how much cellulite is showing or whatever will kill you I realize I have not been looking in the mirror that much and I haven't been turning around looking at my cellulite like examining every part of my body in the mirror and that has been so incredibly freeing once you stop focusing so much on the parts of yourself that you may not like those parts of yourself will pretty much disappear out of sight out of mind out of mind out of heart out of heart freedom bliss not focusing so much on the parts of myself that I don't like really helped me live in the moment and live a much healthier life. So stop worrying so much. Nobody cares as much as you do, I promise. And just quit constantly checking up on yourself. It's just not healthy, it's not good. You look great, I promise, you look great. Also, telling yourself that you look good in the mirror is really helpful, it's pretty awesome. I used to, I haven't done this in a while, but I did for a little bit and it actually really helped. I would look at myself in the mirror and say, you are so beautiful, your body looks great. You you are so healthy. Tell yourself everything you want to be as if you have it already and that actually really helps. Lastly, know that your body will constantly be changing all throughout your life and that's okay. When you notice a change about your body, acknowledge it, accept it, and love it because you have your own body. Like think about that. Your body is you. You are a beautiful one-of-a-kind being and that's really amazing. It is. I think I covered everything. I hope you learned something from this and if you have any questions just leave it in the comment section. I'll be looking at the comments. I know this is a lot of information, but I just wanted to be able to help anybody that was in my position. I want to share with you everything that I've learned personally about food and health and fitness and all of that. You should totally subscribe on your way out. Hit the notification bell too. I don't know. Give the video a like and I'll see you guys in my next video.